Uh, there was one thing that I forgot to add, that was the steel plate to the base of these uh, columns, something to bolt the thing down to. Um, what I have done as well in the meantime, uh, I didn't want to go through this whole process, but using the outliner is something that um, I've sort of discovered rather late on in the, um, using SketchUp. Um, it is very, very powerful. Uh, it allows you to uh, see and edit and rename and group all the sort of existing components in the in the drawing. So what I had done was go to Window and Outliner, load the Outliner up, and then I selected um, all of these columns, or beams, sorry, and sort of grouped them all together and called them under a group of steel beams. So I could, within that, select the individual ones, um, double-click it to edit it as well if I wanted to, so there's all sorts of different things that you can do with that. I did a similar thing with the slab, um, the pads I've grouped there and the steel columns I've grouped as well. So what I basically want to do now is put a pad onto one of these. Now to save me the hassle of having to copy it to each one, because it's kind of part of this, what I'll do is edit this thing. Because it's a group, double click on it and then because it's these components are nested within that group double click on this one to edit it and as I'm editing this I just basically create my 500 comma 500 base and you notice if I zoom out that it's this has appeared the same relative position to all the others then I use push-pull I think it's 30 um, now I could make this into a, um, a separate group or a, s or a separate component within this component. Um, for the purpose of this I probably won't bother but um, really I should because this could be treated as a separate element so in fact I will. I'll right click on that and I'll make it a component and I'll call this um, there's no point in me telling you to do this sort of thing and I don't do it myself so I'll create that. So now you see in the steel columns, each one's got a steel base sort of associated with it. Then I just move this steel base. So if I find the midpoint of this, if I hover over that point and track in, and then hold my finger on the shift key to lock out that, to sort of constrain that track line, then hover over to the other midpoint, then click on that midpoint, it picks it up from the center. I now have to kind of do a similar thing here. So I hover over that midpoint and track out in the green direction, then lock it, then I can track back to this direction. And that's it's positioned. Now the only thing that's slightly out with this is the and let's say it does the same thing for everything else. So I've now positioned in one fell swoop all of these pads or steel bases to each of these columns. Um, if I just select this pad, the steel slab and these pads and then move this down 30 mil <coughs> just so it sits properly on there. So that's a very efficient way of putting the pad onto that. So with the bases fitted we'll uh, set it up in layout. Now there are two ways to approach layout. One is to do most of the things in there. The other thing is to do most of the scene setting in SketchUp and then the scenes will be transferred. And I think that's the preferred method I would like you to adopt. Do everything in SketchUp first. It saves you having to save your drawing and then update the reference in um, layout. So if we open up another window, which is the scenes window, what I've basically need to show on the drawing, I think, is a view like this, a view like that, but orthographically, um, a plan view, and then some details, something like that. Anyway, I'll show you the, the, the methods. So if I just add a couple of scenes, so I've added three scenes which are exactly the same, each one. If I move the drawing a bit and then click on scene two, it kind of revolves back to where scene 2 was, which is the same as scene 1 and scene 3. So until I do any updating of the scenes, and either update the scene by clicking on that thing, update, or right click and update, then 
it'll change. It, it'll revert back to where it was. So I could go from, if I go to scene 1, revolve that like so, right click, update, then go to scene 2, it's going to do that, and then scene 3, I'll move it a bit more, and right click and update that. Now we can flick from one scene to scene 2 to scene 3, and it just kind of tweens itself between one and the other. Now, for scene 1, I want to be in parallel projection, because I want to see it flat on. So parallel projection gives me a flat on view, and I also want to see a um, front view or side view. So I could go camera, standard views, and front, and that'll give me a nice front view, or camera, standard views, back, and that doesn't do any difference because it's the front and back view the same, camera, standard views, top. So these are the sorts of views that we want to put in there. And because I'm in camera parallel projection, then I don't see any sort of perspective. If I go back to perspective, then I get to see the perspective. One point looking down from the center. I want parallel projection. So if I update scene 1, so this is now going to look like this. If I go to scene 2, it's going to go back to the way that scene 2 looked, and go back to perspective. I'll click back on parallel, and go camera, standard views, and front. And then I can right click and update that scene. And for the third scene, we want to see a view like this. I think it was, something like that. It showed this sort of cut out. So I'll just get this looking quite nice and then right click and update scene 3. Now this process can be done um, you know, as many times as you want. You can have as many scenes along here as you choose. Um, also, you could have the Views toolbar. So View Toolbars and then go to Views and this is your perspective, top, front, side, rear, side. Okay? But I just click back on scene 3 and that's going to take me back to the previous view. So very useful um, to use scenes in your models. The other thing we want to do actually in scene 1 I don't want this to have the grey background, I want this to have a hidden line style applied to it. So I need to pull up another one of these things, go to styles, that's off the drawing so I'll move it over here. If I go to my in model style you'll see that everything's fine, there's no update required. As soon as I um, click on the edit and decide to turn the profiles off, which is probably what I'd want, I need to update this style. So I update the style and then I have to update the scene. This will also apply to scene 2 and to scene 3. So until I change the style and maybe apply a different style to this drawing, because I've only got one style in the drawing, then this style is the one that's set for all the scenes. So what I want to do is to add a new style to scene 2 and scene 1. I don't want this blue background, I want a white background. So that's going to be the default styles and if I choose hidden line then that's the hidden line style. Now I'm going to have to right click on scene 2 and update it. Go back to scene 1. See, notice it's got the old style. I need to apply hidden line to scene 1, right click and update. Scene 3, however, is going to be back to the old, the way it looks. Now, if you don't want to see the background, you'd have to create a copy of this architectural design style. So right click, make a copy, call this style with no background, click on this little picture to update that, so that's going to be this one, and then go into edit and we choose the background settings, so we turn off the sky and we make the background purely white and we update the style. 
So we just go back to our in model styles and we've got architectural design style, that's that one. We've got this hidden line style and we've got the style with no background and that's the style I want to set for scene 3. So right click and update. So now I'll flick through these scenes again. So scene 1 has got the parallel projection. There's no um, profiling going on so we can get a nice clear view of the lines and it's hidden line style. Scene 2 is the front elevation again orthographically again with the hidden line style and scene 3 has got this amended sort of architectural design style so I still get sort of the shading going on on this face but I don't get any background so it's again nice and clear. Okay so this is a point where I save the drawing file save and then I will send it to layout. Okay, so in the next video, and that will be the final video I guess, um, I'll send it to layout and show you some of the setting up options that we have in layout.